Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Akansha Parimu and at the top stories we are tracking for you. PM Modi urges unity on greatest challenges as India assumes G20 presidency. Power outages, gas crisis add to winter woes of people in Gilgit Baltistan. And anti-Taliban leader Masood urges elections to create legitimate Afghan government. And now for all the details. As India began its year-long presidency of G20, the group of 20 on Thursday, Prime Minister Narendra Modi said the world must cooperate to tackle the greatest challenges of climate change, terrorism and pandemics. PM Modi said India's G20 presidency will be inclusive, ambitious, decisive and action-oriented. The world must cooperate to tackle the greatest challenges of climate change, terrorism and pandemics, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi said on Thursday as India began its year-long presidency of G20, the group of 20. Today we do not need to fight for our survival. Our era need not be one of war. Indeed, it must not be won, Modi said in a declaration to mark the start of the G20 presidency. Today, the greatest challenges we face can be solved not by fighting each other, but only by acting together, he said, adding, as in our own families, those whose needs are the greatest must always be our first concern. His comment on war echoed a remark he made to Russian President Vladimir Putin in September that now was not a time for war amid the Russia-Ukraine conflict. India's Foreign Minister S. Jay Shankar on the occasion said that G20 presidency offers India an opportunity to share its story with the world and added that it's time that the country should become the voice of the global south. India has said it would aim to depoliticize the global supply of food, fertilizers and medical products so that geopolitical tensions do not lead to global disruptions. As the mother of democracy, India's G20 presidency will be consultative, it will be collaborative and it will be decisive. Having noted that, we must also recognize that the global order today is not truly reflective of the state of the world. G20 members agreed at last month's summit in Indonesia to pursue efforts to limit the rise in global temperatures to 1.5 Celsius, including phasing down unabated use of coal. India, the world's second biggest consumer of coal, said it would prioritize a phased transition to cleaner fuels and the slashing of household consumption to achieve net zero emissions by 2070 to meet its decarbonization pledge. The first phase of voting in India's western Gujarat state was held on Thursday with a voter turnout of nearly 48% recorded till 3 p.m. Considered the bastion of Prime Minister Modi, his ruling Bharatiya Janata Party has never lost an assembly election since 1995. Apart from main opposition Congress, the other main contender is the Aam Aadmi Party. Voting for the first phase of assembly election was held on Thursday in Gujarat, the home state of Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. In the first phase, people in 89 constituencies in Kutch, Saurashtra and southern Gujarat exercised their franchise. PM Modi's Bharatiya Janata Party has not lost in Gujarat Assembly since 1995, with Modi serving as the chief minister of the Western Industrial State for nearly 13 years. Modi remains popular despite criticism of inflation and unemployment. Political analysts suggest a seventh straight term for the Saffron Party in Gujarat, dismissing any sign of anti-incumbency. और महंगाई को ध्यान में रखकर वोटिंग किया है। लास्ट टू इयर्स बेड लास्ट टू इयर्स से बेरोजगारी और महंगाई बहुत ही बढ़ गई है। हम लोगों को काम भी कम हो गया है। 
Meanwhile, PM Modi, Interior Minister Amit Shah and Gujarat's Chief Minister Bhupendra Patel held rallies and roadshows in cities which will see polls in the second phase of assembly elections. In the last state election five years ago, the BJP won 99 seats in the 182-member assembly, while Congress got 77. This time, there is a three-way contest with Congress and the Aam Admi Party also looking to make inroads in the BJP bastion. The second phase of voting will be held on December 5, with results due on December 8. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Foreign Minister and PPP's Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari has termed the 1971 war loss as a military failure. His remarks come exactly a week after former Army Chief General Bajwa claimed the fall of Dhaka was not a military failure but a political failure. Pakistan's Foreign Minister and PPP's Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari on Wednesday dismissed the narrative of political failure in 1971 Indo-Pakistan war. Speaking at his party's 55th Foundation Day rally in Karachi, Bhutto revisited history of his party and said the fall of Dhaka was a military failure which made things hard for the then PM and his grandfather Zulfikar Ali Bhutto's government. He further added Bhutto took up the challenge to reunite the disintegrated country and to regain the lost glory when people had lost hope and confidence. Us jang mein humne jo haare the 90,000 jangi kedi us military failure ke baad hamara dushman ke kaid mein the shahid Zulfikar Ali Bhutto ne apna siyasat se apna danish mandi se apna kamyab kharja policy se wo 90000 jangi kaidi pakistan wapas le aaye pakistan mein apne ghar mein wapas le the statement from bilawal comes after pakistan's former army chief general kamar javed bajwa referred the fall of dhaka as a political failure Bajwa, during his address at General Headquarters last week, had claimed loss in 1971 war was a political failure, adding that number of fighting soldiers was 34,000, with other government officials making the surrendered count to 92,000. Bangladesh, or East Pakistan as it was known after independence from the British, and its guerrilla resistance movement Mukti Bahini, won the 1971 war with the help of Indian military forces and separated itself from West Pakistan on December 16th. Moving on, prolonged power outages and gas crises in Gilgit Baltistan have been forcing the locals in the region to resort to felling trees for cooking and heating. Locals have raised concern the region is already facing the impact of climate change but the government has completely neglected the issue. Unannounced power outages and high price of gas cylinders amid a shortage has irked residents of Gilgit Baltistan as it has become an annual problem with the advent of chilly winters in the mountainous region. Locals have claimed it has made their lives difficult as it is an essential requirement to light a fire and keep themselves warm. And most of them are forced to cut trees for domestic use as they have no other option. They have blamed the government has been apathetic to their plight. So, जब तक गिलगित बल्तिस्तान में गैस और बिजली जो है ना वो जरूरत के मुताबिक यहाँ पर अवेलेबल नहीं होगी, तो जो डीफ वो है अपना यहाँ दरकतों की जो बेजा कटाई है, वो जारी रहेगी और इसका जो इम्पैक्ट पड़ रहा है, आप देख रहे हैं पूरी दुनिया में जो है ना उसका मौसमियाती तब्दीली का शिकार है वो यहाँ पर बार-बार फ्लड से जो है नुकसान का सामना है। Locals in Gilgit Baltistan blame the Pakistan government has repeatedly turned a blind eye to the problems faced by the people of the illegally occupied region. They accuse Pakistan, which rules the region through a proxy, does not grant the locals any political rights and representation, although it taxes them heavily. Anti-Taliban Afghan leader Ahmad Massoud on Wednesday told a conference in Tajikistan that only elections can lead Afghanistan out of political crisis, even if they legitimize the Taliban rule. 
He said that domestic, regional and international consensus is needed to work out a general election framework in Afghanistan. Only elections can lead Afghanistan out of political crisis, even if they legitimize Taliban rule. Afghan anti-Taliban leader Ahmed Massoud told a conference in Tajikistan on Wednesday. The most recent elections in Afghanistan were held under the U.S.-backed administration, which the hardline Islamist Taliban deposed in August 2021 when Western troops withdrew. The Taliban dissolved the country's election commission in December 2021. Massoud, exiled leader of NRF, the National Resistance Front of Afghanistan, making a rare public appearance at an Afghanistan-focused event in the Shanbe, said the domestic, regional and international consensus is needed to work out a general elections framework in Afghanistan. Let the people decide for themselves which kind of government they want, Masood said. If the Taliban came to power through elections, the resistance front will accept that as they will have the authority from the people. Masood did not clarify who should be elected in such a vote. The NRF groups, opposition forces loyal to Masood, son of the former anti-Soviet Mujahideen commander Ahmad Shah Masood. It opposed the Taliban takeover and clashes have occurred since August 2021 between the two sides in the resistance movements, stronghold of Panjshir, north of the capital Kabul. In news from Sri Lanka, the State Finance Minister of Sri Lanka has said that the country aims to restore growth to pre-crisis levels by 2026, with policymakers intent on meeting a December deadline to present proposals that might help unlock an international monetary fund bailout. Sri Lankan State Finance Minister Shehan Sema Singhe said on Wednesday that the island nation aims to restore growth to pre-crisis levels in 2026 with policymakers intent on meeting a December deadline to present proposals that might help unlock an international monetary fund bailout. Sema Singh said in an interview at Reuters Next conference that the budget presented for the year 2023 would set targets for 2025, making sure that by 2026 we would be in a better position. In the budget presented last month, President Ranil Vikrame Singh vowed to restore economic stability and return the country to a growth path. The government is talking with creditors about a debt restructuring that is critical before it receives a much needed 2.9 billion US dollars bailout package from the IMF. Meanwhile, the country's statistics department said on Wednesday that the key inflation rate is to 61% in November from 66% in October. Sri Lanka's other main inflation measures, the National Consumer Price Index, which captures broader retail price inflation, slowed to 70.6% last month after hitting a record 73.7% in September. The island nation is suffering its worst financial turmoil in 70 years as a result of economic mismanagement as well as the COVID-19 pandemic that wiped out the Indian Ocean Islands' key tourism industry. Buddhist monks offered prayers for the long life of Tibetan spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama, in India's Dhamshala on Wednesday. The Dalai Lama fled from Lhasa for asylum in India in 1959 after an abortive uprising against Chinese rule. He has since lived mostly in the hill town of Dhamshala. Buddhist monks on Wednesday offered prayers for the long life of the exiled Tibetan spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama at the main Tibetan temple in India's northern hill town of Taramshala. Scores of nuns and followers also attended the ceremony as prayer for His Holiness's long life by his two tutors and others were chanted, following by a prayer invoking the Dharma protectors of Tibet, enjoying them to do their duty. Uh, today is the li long life uh, prayer offering to His Holiness the Dalai Lama. This is uh, one of the series of long life prayers offerings that his, uh, people have been requesting, associations have been requesting His Holiness to accept that. And it's not possible to do all at once. So most of the time, four or five organizations and groups are combined together to offer long life prayer offering to His Holiness. India hosts a large community of Tibetans. 
including their exile leader, the Dalai Lama. The Nobel laureate fled from Lhasa for asylum in India in 1959 after an abortive uprising against Chinese rule. He has since lived mostly in Dharamshala, where his supporters run a small government in exile and advocate Tibetans' autonomy by peaceful means. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.